In this video, we demonstrate geometric principles fundamental to intercorporeal suturing and knot tying. In this first sequence, loading the needle at its mid-arc is accomplished easily by the principle that a curved needle will follow a curve. Demonstrated here is a self-writing technique. Note the lower instrument blade pressing downward into the soft tissue creating a curved hollow into which the needle writes itself under the downward grasp of the upper blade. Needles can be safely loaded on bowel, colon, or peritoneum. In this next sequence, driving the needle according to its curve is emphasized. Following the drive, instrument pronation, and retrieval of the needle is safely achieved, again by following the curve of the needle. In contrast demonstrated here is failure to pronate the instrument, thus setting up a retrieval unable to follow the needle curve with apparent risk of tail hook injury. In this knot tying sequence with the needle drive from right to left already performed and the suture length pronated back towards the short tag, the right instrument holds the suture over the tag ready for the first wind. A double forward wind is accomplished and the two winds unloaded onto the tag without pulling or lengthening the tag end. Pronation of the suture length back towards the tag is again accomplished and the suture regrasps now in the left instrument. A second forward wind is demonstrated and is tightened. In this sequence, the fundamental concepts of suture angle and instrument angle are identified. Evident in the graphic is a blue instrument angle and a red suture angle. The blue instrument angle, approximately 80 degrees, is greater than the 45 degree suture angle, a geometric relationship critical for laparoscopic knot tying. Here, in contrast, the 90 degree blue instrument angle is much smaller than the red suture angle and most unfavorable for knot tying. With instrument angles equal to or greater than the suture angle, the double wind is easily accomplished and for the second throw, a suture angle is set almost equal to the instrument angle. In contrast, on the right, the suture angle is set much larger than the instrument angle, and a wind is it unachievable. Resetting the suture angle to be equal to or less than the instrument angle provides geometric relationship, then favorable for tying. In this next sequence, where ipsilateral port placement results in an even smaller instrument angle, even smaller suture angles, are necessary. Without a smaller suture angle, attempts on the left to wind the instrument around the suture are futile. On the right, with the instrument angle equal to the suture angle, winding twice is nearly effortless. Here, both instrument tips are curved to each other, creating an instrument angle functionally equal to the suture angle the advantage of curved tips with close instrument placement evident. In this final sequence, the fundamental concept of instrument angle plane and suture angle plane are identified. In the graphic, the plane described by the instrument angle is demonstrated in blue. The plane described by the suture angle is demonstrated in red. Reliable knot tying necessitates that these two angles be coplanar. In this sequence, not only is the instrument angle larger than the suture angle, but both angles are also coplanar. All conditions necessary for easy tying. Demonstrated clearly is the importance of unloading loops off the instrument and onto the short tag end. We have demonstrated three basic geometric principles fundamental to effective laparoscopic intracorporeal suturing and knot tying. A 
the self-writing load of a needle depends on creating a soft tissue curve. A needle drive and retrieval must follow the curve of the needle. To tie a knot, the instrument angle must be equal to or greater than the suture angle. For reliable winds, the instrument angle and suture angle planes must be coplanar. Working with these basic geometric principles will result in reliable laparoscopic suturing and knot tying.